In a previous video, we went over how to use Node.js and install that into your current environment so that we can start using Node ecosystem packages. One of those things that a lot of people use is Gulp.js to do asset compilation. We've done videos over Django Pipeline, which compiles, say, Stylus and CoffeeScript down into JavaScript and CSS and kind of keeps things transparent. However, there's a lot of magic that goes on, and sometimes people want a lot more control and want to fine-tune things. One way to do that is with Gulp.js, and so in this video, we're going to go over how to do that. Firstly, this assumes that Node.js is installed in your current environment, and we're ready to go. Let's look at our project. We'll do an LS. This is a demo project. We have everything we'd normally have. We have our project folder, manage.py, static, and templates. If we look in our static folder. You can see we have build, CSS, JS, and stylus. Build is going to be the final location we output all of our compilation of our stylus, JavaScript, and CSS. So it's going to be the place that we reference in our settings file. So if we look in our settings file, you'll see we have static URL is slash static, and then in static files dirs, we have static slash build. This way it accesses that build folder that we just referenced a second ago. And then finally we have static root, and this is the location when you do a collect static that everything will dump into. So if we'll move on and we'll look at our base HTML template, you can see that we are call using the static template helper and we're saying, hey, we want to get JavaScript slash vendor.min.js, CSS vendor.min.css, and then we also want to get CSS slash main.css. These are the final outputs that we're going to have our gulp.js script do no matter what the files that we create, we want to make sure they end up in there. So we've just gone ahead and set them in our template because we know everything's going to end up there. And let's go ahead and look in our JS file, JS folder in static. We see that we have bootstrap and jQuery. These are vendor files that we're going to concatenate together and output. And then in our CSS folder, we have bootstrap.min.css. And then in our stylus folder, we have main.style and this is going to be our main stylus file that we would be doing editing in. So with all that out of the way of our project structure, let's go ahead and deal with Gulp. First thing that we need to do is we need to install it globally, and then we follow that up by installing it and its dependencies locally. You need to have it installed both globally in your project and locally for your project as well. And it's a good idea to adjust your git ignore file accordingly. And then we want to, once we have those two, those installed, we want to install some other packages for Gulp. We're going to install Gulp Stylus, Gulp Concat, and Gulp Rename. This is so that we can compile stylus files, we can concatenate files together, and we can rename them as well. And we can verify that Gulp is installed by doing Gulp version, and it prints out our version. Now that we have all that out of the way, when you run your Gulp command, it is going to look for a gulpfile.js. And inside of that, it's going to look for key things. So let's go ahead and start by creating our gulp file.js. We need to do some imports. Specifically, we need to import gulp, gulp stylus, gulp rename, and gulp concat. This is so that we can actually use these in our tasks. First task that we're going to write is we're going to create gulp.task, and we're going to name it stylus. This is going to be the name of our task that we'll run here in a little bit. We're going to pass it a callback function, and we're going to say, hey, we want to take the source file of static slash stylus, do star.style to get all stylus files. Once Gulp grabs all those files, we go to the next step, which is a pipe, and that's basically saying, hey, do this, then do this, then do this, then do this. That's really all pipe does. We're going to call the stylus command so that it actually converts all of our stylus files into CSS. And then we're going to say, hey, we want the destination of our files to be in static build CSS. In this case, since we have main.style, it's going to take main.style, it's going to compile it to CSS, and then save it into static build CSS slash main.css. So it's great that we have our stylus task, but in all honesty, the gulp command is not going to know how to run it. So we're going to write another task, and we're going to name it default, 
This is similar to a main of an application. This is what Gulp is going to execute. And we're just going to pass it an array of tasks that we want to execute by default. In this case, stylus, since it's the only one we have. So with that out of the way, let's go ahead and run it. And there we go. We have some output. It's starting the stylus task. It's finishing it, and then it's doing the default task and finishing it. And then if we do an ls of static build CSS, it outputs main.css. And if we open it, you see we get our output, and we can compare that side by side with our stylus file. It does exactly what we expect it to do. So next, let's actually look at our vendor.js files. We're going to create another gulp task and call it vendor. I'm going to pass a callback function and we're just going to do our source. We're going to say we're going to take all the CSS files in our CSS. We're going to concatenate them all together and do vendor.css. Then we're going to rename them and we're going to use the extension name of .min.css. And then we're going to output that to static build CSS. And then we're going to do the exact same thing for our JavaScript files. But if you'll notice, instead of doing a glob for matching, we just went ahead and put the entire name of the file. So you can do it either way. You can have it match against a bunch of files, or you can have it do very specific files. That way you can process different files differently. And then finally, we're going to put it out to the static build.js. And we also want to add vendor to our default task. If we'll look in our static build folder, we don't have CSS. If we run our file, it executes everything, and we do our ls and build, and we have JS. And if we look in our JS folder, we have vendor.min.js. And then if we open our JS file and scroll through it, we see we have the minified jQuery and Bootstrap JavaScript. And same thing with our vendor CSS. We have our minified bootstrap that we brought in as vendor.css. And really, that's all there really is to it, to get files from one location to another and then manipulate them in between. Gulp provides a lot of things that you can do if you'll just take a look at some of the packages that are available to, for dealing with your static files. The issue now is that every time you make a change, you're going to have to run the gulp command. Fortunately, gulp comes with a built-in watch command so that it watches for changes and will go ahead and recompile your code. To do this, tmux is going to help, so let's go ahead and open it up. And then first, let's go ahead and edit our gulp file. We want to give it some paths, so we're going to create some new JSON. We're going to say we want the scripts path it is going to be all JS files, and we want the CSS path to be all stylus files. So anytime a JS file changes or anytime a stylus files change, then we're going to do something. So now that we've defined our paths, let's go ahead and create a new task called watch. And we're going to say gulp.watch paths.scripts, and we're going to run the vendor task. We're going to watch for paths.css, and we're going to run the stylus task. Next, we add the watch task to our default so that it starts automatically. So now when we run gulp, it's going to just sit there and essentially wait for an action to happen. So if we start up gulp in, in our side pane, we see it's there, ready, executed, and it's ready and listening. And in actuality, if we'll just touch one of our files, so if we touch our main.style file, you'll see on the right, it went ahead and executed it. If we touch, say, a JavaScript file, it executes that as well. So every time we change something, it'll just go ahead and keep executing it over and over and over again. We can demonstrate this that it actually changes by going ahead and editing our main.style. We'll change it from black to green, and you see it writes. So we'll go ahead and open up our main.css, and you'll see in row there it changed our black code to a green code. So for some wrapping up, let's go ahead and start our run server. And if we curl our CSS file in static CSS main.css, it gives us our CSS file. And notice it is not in the slash build folder because that's not how we set it in our settings. And then if we'll also curl just the index page, you can see we have the proper URL locations for all of our static files.
And really that's all there is to it for getting something going with Gulp. It allows for a lot of power and once you actually figure out how it works, it's super simple to set up. Much like everything else, I encourage you to download and give it a shot and see what you think and to determine from there whether you want to use it or not. I've actually converted a couple of my projects to using Gulp.js from Django Pipeline. I'm not sure which I like more, I'm still evaluating. But I encourage you to try it and leave feedback. And with that, thank you for watching and have a great day.